iOS 13. It's gonna be a big one. If you love Apple, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. What is going on guys? Apple World here. So here's a fun fact about me. I actually get more excited about software rather than hardware. I mean, don't get me wrong, new iPhones are always awesome, but I always get more excited about the brand new iOS update rather than the brand new iPhone. That's just me. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer seeing new iPhones or new updates such as iOS 13, which is coming later on this year? And watch us. WatchOS, WatchOS 6, jeez, we're already in WatchOS 6, that's crazy. WatchOS, I'm, I'm, I'm always excited to see new WatchOS features, but anyways, in this video, we're going to go ahead and check out what iOS 13 definitely needs. I mean, there's so many features that, to be honest, I don't even know why iOS doesn't have. Let's go ahead and start off the video. Dark mode, why doesn't iOS have a dark mode? Every time I'm in my bed and I'm going, I'm about to go to bed, my screen is so bright. I need a dark mode on iOS. We also need a redesigned home screen. That's my next one. I mean, we've had the same home screen since the launch of the iPhone. We definitely need a brand new home screen. Widgets. I mean, why can't we have widgets like on Android? I know it doesn't look as clean, but I'm sure Apple, Apple, I'm sure you will make the way to make widgets look minimal, look really Apple-like. I mean, imagine having the weather on your lock screen, on your home screen, for example, on your home screen, on your lock screen. Imagine having your activity app on your home screen. Kind of like complications on the Apple Watch, but it would work the same way, but on the home screen, um, you know, messages. Maybe you could have a chat on, on your home screen. I mean, there's the possibilities are endless, and you, Apple, you could open it to developers, and we could have our favorite apps on which it's on our actual home screen. That's something that I would definitely be really interested in. Siri, um, Siri, I'm sorry, but you're just, it's just stupid. I, mean, Siri, I heard you, you are stupid. I, I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings, Siri, but it's just kind of true. If you compare yourself to the Google Assistant, I've had the Pixel, Siri. The Pixel is actually, no. I've got the Pixel right here. The Google Assistant is in here and the Google Assistant is way smarter than you. No. I'm sorry. I know you've got Apple Music. I know you've got my HomeKit support and stuff, but this guy is smarter than you. And I'm sorry, Siri. To you are stupid. I hate you. You can insult me all you want, but I'm just stating the truth. We also, Siri shortcuts. I mean, with iOS 12, Apple brought us Siri shortcuts, which are amazing. Don't get me wrong. They're just hard to use. And I'm, I'm not the only one saying this. I'm sure you find the same way. I'm sure you're sharing the same opinion as me. Siri shortcuts are just hard to use. Apple. You're always making us the most simplest products and the most simplest service and the most simplest OS. But Siri shortcuts is just not intuitive to use. My mom, she should simply be able to open up the shortcuts app and be able to start using it. And if I show her the Siri shortcuts app, I mean, to be honest, I know how to use the Siri shortcuts app, but it's just not intuitive even for me. And I love tech and I'm with tech every single day, every single minute of the day. And Siri shortcuts is just hard to use. To be honest, I wanted to make a bunch of Siri shortcut videos, but I wanted to make a how to use Siri shortcuts. But if I don't really know, I know how to use it once again, but if I don't fully understand how Siri shortcuts works, don't get me wrong, once again, I know how to use it, but if I actually wanna teach you how to use it, I just can't. And I don't wanna make a video telling you something that I'm not really 100% sure about it so Siri shortcuts is one thing that Apple you should seriously be focusing more on because it's an amazing idea I love it but you should simply make it more intuitive for us to use why do we still have this volume pop-up which is huge on the iPhone it's even larger whenever wa we're watching videos depending on what app you're using but usually always you get this freaking huge volume pop-up and Apple you should seriously fix this make it you know more minimal and put it on the top do whatever you want but you seriously have to fix that now let's get into the most important stuff the iPad Apple if you want the iPad Pro to replace a MacBook which and for a lot of people it can but for me it can replace my MacBook sure but it can't replace my iMac and my iPad Pro I get asked this question a bunch of times. Can you edit video on the iPad Pro? And the answer is yes. Is it easy? You can get used to it, sure. It's, it's intuitive, sure. I mean, the only thing, the only problem that the iPad Pro has is the file management. It just simply doesn't have one. First step, when let's say I, I'm, I, I wanna edit this video. I have to grab my USB-C adapter and plug it in and then it goes straight to the Photos app 
It just doesn't make sense. Apple, you seriously have to find a good file management way to, for us to import footage, for example, import photos, import videos. It's just not a good way to do it right now. All right, next step. I, I, I've officially imported all of my footage to edit my video. What's next? I, I usually always download some music uh, off the internet. I can't download music from YouTube copyright free. I can't download it on my iPad. But Nikius, you can do that. Sure, I, I'm sure there's ways, but Apple, this should be a native feature on iOS. I don't want to download a third party app for me to download one song that is copyright free. Currently, if you want to select text on iOS, you have to double tap, press select, and then do like this. Don't get me wrong, it's a good way to do it, but I'm sure there's a better way to, to figure this stuff out. With the Mac, it's just way much better to just do it with the mouse, you click and then you drag. It's just a simpler way to do it. Apple, you should find a way to actually do this. Also, now I just actually thought of this in my head, the smart keyboard. Apple's famous, really expensive smart keyboard. Don't get me wrong, I love this thing, but this thing is really expensive. Apple, I'll pay for a smart keyboard. I actually already paid for it and I like it. The only problem with the smart keyboard is it, it just feels like this is not even coming from Apple because sure, there's a bunch of shortcuts on iOS, but this needs to be better integrated in iOS. It just doesn't feel like it's made for the iPad. So Safari, Safari on the iPad. Why do we have a different version of Safari on the iPad and on the Mac? It just does not make sense. Apple, we need desktop class Safari coming coming to the iPad. It's seriously getting really annoying because if you really want this to replace a MacBook, we need desktop class Safari. Also, Apple Pencil support is something, Apple Pencil support on the iPad is something that you've done amazing. Amazing. I love tapping on my lock screen with my Apple Pencil and that bringing me to the Notes app. That's one of the most useful features on iOS currently that I use. So Apple, if you get to add more of those features, more Apple Pencil gestures or whatever you want to call it on iOS 13, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so there's just one more feature that I've been waiting off for the whole video, and it's one thing that I definitely desperately need. Not wish I had, no, I need to have the following thing that I'm about to say. And I'm just gonna finish off the video with these three words. I'm gonna finish off the, this iOS 13 wish list. Apple needs to add video with three words. Final Cut Pro.